Okay, YouTube, here's the update of the portable generator. What you're looking at now is the structure I built. I got my panels up top. I decided, well, let's just add this into using for house, plus it's still got the portability of it. Okay, so let's walk over here first. Here's the generator sitting on a steel shelf I had. Got that. And up top here, I have 300 watt solar panels. It's charging it. It's tied in. I made a wood structure for it. They're all looped together. It comes over here. You look up here. Cable comes in. Grounding. So it's grounded there. All the panels are grounded together. It comes off that ground there. Panels tie into this cable. It comes down here. Then I have a disconnect box. Just like the did regular system. So inside of here, just like my other systems, I have a 20 amp breaker, a secure load center breaker, so it's DC rated, up to 48 volts. This is a 12 volt system. So I can shut the power off here to the panel. It goes down, then it comes down, 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 goes into the bottom. What you see down here, I put in, you now, ching, that little jobber there. That comes out, goes underneath, comes back up right here. So I have an extension cord into that so I can go to my patio right now and run in lighting and stuff in the patio. This is my other system, the 24 volt system. And there's outlets over here and that way I can just run the power and come across here. And when it comes in, you can see it comes through the cord that's coming from the top comes through there then it breaks back down here and as you can see there what I have here is my Anderson connector coming out then I have my grounding that comes out of there and if you look back here you can see see it going over the white tape I'll show you that in a second then the Anderson connectors right there so that's what's coming into the solar from the top so I can disconnect it and take it as portability <laughs> Then what I have here is the black, you see your copper wire coming across, then this black wire here is off the inside of this box which grounds the box and grounds everything inside. Put a split nut right there, that comes over, travels across, goes to the grounding rod. So the top one of the grounding rods for the 24 volt, the bottom one is the 12 volt system right here, so everything's grounded to an earth ground. Now, take a look at the box. It's early morning, so right now, if that's going to show up or not, at 14.5 volts. It's early charging up. Go ahead and open the box and see some changes going in here. What you see here is my grounding lug. This goes to the outside of the box where the other black cable connects to. I have a wing nut, and that way I can ground it quickly. This goes over and goes into my inverter. And then here it grounds the whole box. So the whole case is grounded. And let's take a look here. Behind here. I'll shut this. And the hell you can't even see it. But it goes to a wing nut back there. Open this back up. So inside of here now, still have the inverter. It's powered on. Everything's like the other video. This little piece of junk right here, that thing only puts out about 75 amps, 80 amps, and it trips. So that's going to be replaced. It says it's 150. Bullshit. That thing don't run no 150. That thing's junk. So that's got to come out. I'm going to put regular battery disconnected there, and then I'll put a 125, 150 amp fuse in there. What I got now is two deep cycle batteries in here. These are AGM, they're Vision batteries. They're 75 amp hours a piece, AGM. Man, these things are freaking awesome. A buddy of mine had them. And let me tell you, man, you could run TV for, I put a 150 watt load on this thing for an hour and a half. And in the morning, it was still at 13 volts. They just kicked butt. And I got them for free. Can't beat that. So inside of here, you see all my positives land here. Same as you've seen in the other video, the positives are here. 
taped everything off, marked everything so nothing can hit that. And then what I did here, put a magnetic strip in right here. So if this battery was to go over or anything, it's not going to touch the box. It's going to hit the magnetic strip. Same thing down here. I put another magnetic strip on that bar. So if this was to take it off, whatever, it's not going to hit that and ground out. A little more safety features going in there. Then cover everything. Here's my positive. Covers over it. So nothing's going to cross over. You drop a wrench or whatever, it's not going to hit that and hit that. So it's there. Then everything crosses over. So from here is my power coming out. On the other battery, all my negatives land over here. So I'm crossing, crossing over from this battery to this battery. It's crossed over. So power in over here. The negatives on the opposite battery. They loop underneath. Comes back up. So you see one negative here. <clears throat> this negative comes over to here, and then all my negatives land there. And then on that side, you have the one positive loops over. So all my positives land here crosswise. Uh, it's a pretty good little system. Works really well. Uh, this will be update number two of the build process. I just decided that I was going to put it into the cabinet. I had this cabinet. And I'm like, it's still portable. All I do is disconnect my Anderson connector. I have another 100 watt solar panel that I take with me with the Anderson style connector. It plugs right into it. So I have a 100 watt solar panel charging it. If I go portable with it, and it just takes me a second. I disconnect it. The Harbor Freight's hooked up in the back to this too. I can just 